Oh, Mrs. Barrichello is a beautiful <laughs> baby boy. What have you called him? Oh, thank you, Ken Swellers. He is called Rubens. <laughs> Rubens! Oh, be careful! He's thrown one of his toys out of the pram. I'll pick it up. Oh, oh. oh Ken Swellers, what happened? Where is Rubens' toy gone? I don't know. I, I, I think it was run over by Karen Shandor. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed, the only podcast actually called Gareth Jones on Speed, presented by me and Zog. Hello. And Richard. Hello. And if proof that this sport that we love so very much is nothing more than a transient bit of entertainment, can anyone remember the results of the race previous to Monaco? <laughs> I was surprised when I looked at that the other day. I thought, oh, yes. Mark Webber won previously, didn't he? Yeah, because he won, he won one last week yeah. with two wins in seven days or eight. That was, yeah, it was there. only last week as well. Yeah, I know, is, but the thing oh, was, it, you know. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so that's what less than a minute in, <laughs> and you've broken. Is this a sort of Australian thing? Is it a knowing tribute to Mac? <laughs> You've suddenly become slightly less decorous than normal. <laughs> I apologise. I thought I was at home. Oh my god! That's... <laughs> this is a new low. For this I'm show. very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to create the smell of sheep as a tribute to Mark Webber. I am genuinely sorry about that, boys. Where were we? Mark Webber. Mark Webber, who won in, in Monaco and, and won in Barcelona previously. Isn't he having a good season, boys? Yes. Well, that's it. You've been listening to Gareth Jones Cheers. and Speed. Good Join night. us next week for another <laughs> Actually, what I should say is that, that Adrian knew he's having a very good season, really. Yes, isn't he? yes, he is. Yeah, he is. But, I mean, you know, extraordinary that Weber has come as good as he has. I mean, I think we've all been, you know, Weber fans to some extent. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I know you're very keen on him. Well, I I mean, you know, I I thought thought it was terrific, really, from the first time that we saw him. Because that very first race, home Grand Prix in a Minardi Mm. and finishing... Six. yeah, finishing sixth yeah. in a Minardi with a broken differential. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. It's quite, know. quite extraordinary. Just like his low-nonsense style, he can be a bit of a hooligan on track from time True. to time. And yeah. His moves aren't always the best judge, the most finesse. But, but in the last finished, two races, excited. he showed Vettel a way to go, and yeah. we all know what a talent Vettel is. So, whew, champion, boys? <laughs> I know it's early it's to be, say. I mean, I don't know. It, it is early to say, but, you know, in, in a way, I don't care who wins, really. I'd love to see Webber win it. I'd love to see Vettel win it. I'd love to see Hamilton win it again. I'd love to see Button win it again. Mm. <sighs> but if it had to be a Red Bull that was going to win it, I'd go for Webber every time. Because I think that he's... How old is he now? Well, 30, 312. Is he? Yeah. Ah, OK. Vettel's only two. Interesting. What scale are you using here? Oh, Welsh scale. I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, then what is three plus three? Uh, 409 to the power of 12 and a half. Oh, well done, yes, then that's right. We are very clever, boy. Now, what would you like to be when you grow up, yes, then? Oh, when I grow up, I would like to be a racing driver in Formula 74.6. Oh, F74.6! That's the top flight to motorsport. It's very expensive. I read recently that the HRT team have a budget of over £2.1. Wow, that sounds like such a lot. What would that be in English maths? Um, £2.1. Yes, Petrol! We've got a Jones on speed! Sorry, where were we? Yes, uh, Weber is not at the end of his career, but certainly he's older. He's one of Mm. the older drivers, as well as one of the taller drivers, which is another reason why I like him. Well, I mean, you know, I think he's he's a bit too tall. No, 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 he's not. From my point of view, I would say he's he's, a little too tall. There's nothing wrong with being tall. (laughs) I would say that. I don't know. Well, we'll we'll leave that to one side. But no, but but, but, how tall is Weber? 
Out of interest. Uh, he's he's still still on the tools he's more, six, he? Hang on, let's ask the girlfriend. Girlfriend. He's six plus, I think, isn't he? Girlfriend. Hi. Can you look on the interweb and find out exactly how tall yeah. Mark Webber uh, is, okay. please? This is a first. This is Gareth Jones Beat doing research during the show. It's well, like working even, it's, at the it, New Yorker. We have a fact checker <laughs> over there. <laughs> Can I just <laughs> say, this, just... this is a first. in the first time we've done any research well, for this show. Really <laughs> <don't know. laughs> it's a day of firsts, really, isn't it? You broke wind audibly on air. In, in old money. 1.85 metres in new money. Now I have to... Oh, 5 foot 9? No. No. That can't be. No, 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 no. You're right. He's sure to be 6'2". I, I say 6'1". Six I reckon he's 6. No. Yeah, 6 foot, 6 foot 1, something like that. OK, how many? What's 1.85 metres? I, Not in Welsh. I'm talking about oh, right. from <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's a one uh, one eightieth of the length of a football. Pit. I don't know. It's, Nelson's it's, column. It's, what is it in area of Belgium? Of yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Go on. If we look at the active drivers, the average height is five foot nine. Is it? One hundred and seventy-four centimeters. Slightly taller than you think. Like mm-hmm. me. I know. I'm more than that. I'm one point eight five. Yeah. Only three drivers break the six foot barrier. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. All Mark right. Webber. Okay. Mark. Yeah. Two Kamiko Bayashis. We, yeah. we take two. Is Mark Webber over six foot? It says, Coulthard and Button are both six foot. Mark Webber is the giant of Formula One at six foot one. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Well, well Thank done. you. Six foot one. Of course, do you oh, remember yeah. Justin but Wilson? He was seven foot eight. He was, yeah. It was a big problem. <laughs> he was a big in a looming car. freak. Hello. And very bashful with it. You ever met Justin Wilson? Uh, yeah, weirdly, I have. The, the most oh, bashful weird. of racing drivers you will ever meet. Hmm. The most unassuming man. Delicious. Uh, Delicious? Well, in, in that he wasn't the cocky, overconfident type yeah. that, that many of them are. You know. I think I met him on the same day I met Ralph Furman. Oh yeah, Very nobody polite. remembers. One, one, Ralph. Ralph. I know, Ralph. one of the forgotten drivers. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible well. skin. Yes, he does. Yes, I he does. That. I know yeah. that sounds like a crass thing to say, but I was just struck by the fact that he had really bad acne. Ralph, I was like, Aha, you're a racing driver, but I've got better skin. Um, <laughs> He, uh, he's still he drove, a racing driver. Well, and then he probably we zoomed off in drivers, a private... We need all yeah, of them. Yeah, exactly. We you need, need everything you can. Them. Also, I noticed I was taller than him. Ex-Jordan well. driver, Ralph Ehrman, and yeah. also drove for Team Ireland in A1GP. So mm. I, I've actually got his name written on my special Jordan customised vacuum cleaner. It says Ralph oh. Ehrman. It's got an Irish flag on it. So, yeah, yeah, well, he did suck a bit. Oh! <laughs> Just to rewind back to the height thing, that was the first answer I found on the internet, and I think it's from three years ago. Remember yeah. I oh, mentioned Coulthard, he, he didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, so he may be asymmetrically. Yeah. <laughs> Warning, the value of Mark Webber may go down as well as up. Remember, he'll have one leg slightly longer than the other now after that bike crash. Yes, he, he will. Yeah. 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 Well, he's you know, a bit he, accident-prone in a way, isn't he, Webber? I mean, he has mm, had some accidents, he's not had. just in Formula 1. think that's because he's a bit reckless? To get back to what you were saying, uh, before we went off of that on the height tangent yes. um, no maybe not approaching end of career but Mark Webber absolutely is one of the oldest drivers on the grid and mm. he's absolutely one of those who you know if he doesn't have a good year he's absolutely the driver who people would start to say well you know where's he going to go next he's yeah. not going to get in you know uh, it'd be nice to see him do well yeah and he's in that stage of his career where if he doesn't make a big impression, if he doesn't win a championship you know, in the next year or two, his chance is almost certainly gone. Mm. So it's really good to see him coming good. It's, it's, it's <clears> fantastic. <throat> and, and I tell you what I really loved is the pure joy in his voice when you hear him, particularly you know, when he won his first race, you know, just hearing him on the radio, how happy he was, that was a fantastic mm. moment. One of the great moments of last year. Talking about joy, the celebrations at Monaco. Yes. Um, the two Red Bull drivers and Christian Horner, the faux Dutchman, Mm. in the swimming pool with the trophy but this is the bit that got me that their swimming pool was actually on the roof of the Red Bull motorhome did you know that? That whole thing now if there are efforts to bring costs down in F1 not be a swimming pool on the roof for a start (laughs) on the swimming pool on the roof, exactly well swimming pools on the roof of anything be it a hotel or another kind of hotel. Um, <laughs> I've never been to a house where it's got it. I'm sure they do exist in, you know, fancy places like London. What, what? Oh, wait, no, not that. Miami. They're the <laughs> ones there, yeah. But it terrifies me because water's really heavy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's famous for it. Mm. It is well known for it. <laughs> Even on the Welsh scale, water yeah. weighs upwards of 6.4, I think. The clever thing about water is that one litre of water weighs one kilogram. Anyone mm. would think yeah. that they'd worked it out that way. 
That's that's uh, it's good, isn't it? Mm. Do you know? <laughs> it's a funny thing, actually. You probably won't know this, but um, guess how much a kilogram of water is in in quantity. Uh, I bet it's around roughly a litre. It is. That's you incredible. see, they've worked it backwards as well to make sure. Ah, yeah, see, they don't mess about. Clever these it Europeans. Comes system. <laughs> but also talking about swimming pools at Monaco. Did you notice on the yacht that the BBC were hosting their show from? Mm. It was a very big yacht, uh, you know, a lovely motor cruiser. But in order to find enough space to have Eddie Jordan and David Coulthard and Jake Humphrey and the floor manager and the producer and two cameramen, one of the cameramen was actually standing in the jacuzzi. Yeah. I didn't know that. But whilst that, holding yeah. a digital oh, camera on his shoulder, wow. a big full you know, broadcast yeah. camera. Yeah. Uh, Wearing a pair of shorts yeah. in the jacuzzi. Yeah, he was. And yeah. there was still, you could see there was still water in the jacuzzi. Yeah. In, in a but way, the, probably the, quite pleasant, you know. Just nice to cooling, a cooling. Yeah, uh, after a while, though, obviously, you get very wrinkled feet. Especially if you're doing the, you get the, the forum, the, the BBC yeah, F1 yeah. forum. And you get nervous about, putting a, nervous about putting the camera down, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't, and I'll just pop a battery out to change it. Oh, no. Um, I'm sure I remember this from biology at school, uh, though I wasn't really paying attention, that if you lay in a bath for uh, long enough, that uh, your cells would become saturated with absorbing fluid and you would literally explode. I think that's bollocks. Um, your bollocks would explode. Um, oh, my well, God. Well, hang on, to a point, um, uh, no, when they recover rubbish. bodies that have been floating in the sea for a while, because of osmotic pressure across a semi-permeable membrane, those bodies do swell up No, a they swell bit. up because of gas. Decom- oh, gas, really? Decomposing? Uh, that's produced by uh, decomposition within the body makes a body swell up. That's true. Not water. When I was at school, my friend Rob Jackson's brother worked in a morgue as a summer job at hospital, and he said that dead bodies fart. Oh, that's a worry. Should we talk about motorsport again? That's a brilliant again? fact. So, yeah, so yeah, does okay. that mean that, I actually died at the start of this programme? It smells like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hola, Bernie. It's Jose Ramon Carrabente. Who? I own the Hispania racing team. Oh, that's right. How are things at the back? Not so good, Bernie. We are running out of the cash. We need your help, Bernie. Well, you're in luck, as it happens. I have a good old friend who might be able to invest in your team. Oh, saints be praised. Just a minute, I'll put him on. Hello, my friend. It's uh, like an investment opportunity. Hey, mm, sexy time. HRT for the older lady. One of the things I love most about Formula One is the potential for controversy. And I think this is driven mostly by the fact that there's so much money at stake in Formula One that any decision has sort of massive financial repercussions. For instance, you would argue over one or two points of the team because the difference it makes to the funding that you get from F1 you know, to keep your team going is massive. And this whole issue over Schumacher passing Alonso in the closing overs, can we say that, of the Monaco Grand Prix, was particularly entertaining. I've got a very strong view on this, and it's yeah, me too, me too. probably not the view that most people would expect me to come up with, I think, on this as well. But I'd be interested to hear what you two say about it. So, well, slightly to my surprise, I find myself backing Schumacher 100%. I think he was absolutely robbed. Explain what happened. Explain. Very briefly... Three laps before the end of the race, there was an incident, which we might talk about in a moment, that brought the safety car out. The safety car then came back in before the end of the last lap, but only just before the end of the last lap, yep. leaving about one corner and a bit of straight left to run. Yeah, so they could just try and finish at race speed. And yeah, make it exactly. Nice for the cameras, yeah. And, you know, the lights went green, safety car pulled off, everyone picks up the pace, and in the last corner... Schumacher jumps Alonso, takes the place off him. Great little move. And, a classic uh, it Schumacher seems to be, move as well. Kind of, yeah. yeah, there we go. I'm Oppor- coming through. Opportunistic. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and nicely done. And caught Alonso sleeping. And he's been penalised because apparently the rules say that when the race finishes under the safety car, you have to finish in order, no overtaking. But and it seems to me the race didn't finish as a safety car. The green lights well, went on the safety that, car. Okay, so the it? argument well, I subscribe to as well. If what, you what? show drivers a green flag or a green light in the cockpit or the mm. green flashing LEDs that they have these days, as far as I'm concerned, 
you're free to race regardless. And I think well, it's conflicting information if, if they're showing a green light but saying you can't pass. Here's the thing. I haven't bothered to go and read the rules because I'm sticking to the great Gareth Jones tradition of not bothering <laughs> to do any research before we mouth off about something. <laughs> I haven't looked at the rules, but there was clearly this conflicting interpretation of a couple of rules. There were different ways of interpreting a couple of rules, one of which had to do with race finishing under the safety car. Yeah. But it doesn't matter what the rules say. The thing is that when the safety car pulls in, lights yeah. go green, you're racing again. Oh, you know? yeah. And if there's a rule that's contradicting that, you know, because it's happening in the last corner, well, clearly it's not well understood. The, the rule shouldn't be in there. Yeah. Exactly. It's a stupid yeah. rule. It's ridiculous. Maybe they have to rewrite the rules, but it was just it was stupid, and I feel it just seems like they've robbed Schumacher. Yeah, of the so place where we're up to have. at the moment is, as I understand it, Schumacher had, what, 20 seconds added to his time, which bumped him down to 12th. Yep. But uh, in my view, in any given situation like this, where it's Ferrari versus someone else, <laughs> always go against Ferrari, because it's hysterically <laughs> funny when those pompous idiots start waving their arms <laughs> around and getting all stroppy and going, no, 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 it wasn't fair, no, I like it. And particularly because it's Alonso, the whiniest little grass in the whole of the F1 field. I think it's hysterical. It really wouldn't surprise me if the stewards had interpreted the rules absolutely correctly, and according to the letter of the rules, yeah. you know, that, that's oh. what it is. But they're stupid rules. I don't, you know, it is I'm, worth saying, you know, sorry, of I course, the place. that the really funny thing and the thing that caused me to ruin a pair of trousers already is that among the people who were adjudicating on Michael Schumacher <laughs> doing something wrong in Formula One uh, was um, a chap called Damon Hill, yeah. who mm, I young think knows promising. Mr Schumacher already. I they think met, they may, yeah. yes, they may have um, history, yeah. I think they call um, it. I, um, I, do, I do disagree with Schumi getting a 20-second penalty, but I think Damon was right to insist on Michael Schumacher's first-born child being offered up as a sacrifice <laughs> as a penalty. I, I think that's reasonable, yeah. Yeah, I think they someone had to take him on one side and go, Damon, yeah, we don't have capital punishment in Formula One anymore. <laughs> uh-huh. He can't be your bitch for the rest of his life. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> There's no such thing as an FIA prison. You must have imagined that. <laughs> Actually, the, the idea of having former race drivers as stewards at the races seems to be working out quite well, particularly as they're all people we quite like. We had Johnny Herbert a couple of races ago, didn't we? We had Derek Warwick, was it, in Barcelona? Mm. And Damon Hill this time yeah, round. Yeah. I think they should bring Jason Plato in. I think that would make it very <laughs> well, entertaining. Where he'd be ruling on there being not enough contact. Exactly. <laughs> What would you penalise an F1 driver for insufficient contact? How would you do that? I don't know. Yes, we're, we're penalising uh, 22 <laughs> of the drivers in that race. Quite literally That's right. their but, heads but, together. But, but two of those drivers did very well on the Plato scale, I believe. Heike Kovalainen. Uh, sorry, how do you say his name? Keki Hovelöven. Hovel Kovalainen. And Karun Shandok. Poor old Karen. With I mean, a bit of help from Trulli. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, yeah, like, I'm confused. It was, it was Trulli, Trulli and Lotus and, and, yeah. and Karen Shandok in the HRT. Yeah, that was one of those ones where if you were watching it on TV and it suddenly found that accident... And you were looking at it going, how have they done this? <laughs> yeah. I, I have you walking, got to that position? I was walking up a street near where I live uh, the other week and somebody had reversed an Audi A4 Cabriolet into a, a sapling that had been planted on the pavement by the council to you know, sort of jolly up the area a little bit. But in the most extraordinary way. And then just left their car there, crashed into a sapling. I just thought it was always, how have you done this? And the same with... A car on top of another car, mm. but facing the other way. It takes some skill, doesn't it? And then, of course, we saw the replay and it all became clear. A hell of a mm. sort of bizarre accident. And, and, and Karen Shandok putting her hand on his helmet to try and Instinct, fend off yeah, 600 kilo action. racing car. But yeah. Mm. I tell you, Karen will have tyre marks on his helmet, I think. Who was it in the past who had tyre marks on his helmet from an incident like that? I'm trying to remember. I, I think it might have been Graham Hill, actually. Possibly. I think it was even uh, more recent than that. Yes, I think. that rings about. Oh, right. Yeah. But if I was him, I'd have tyre marks on my helmet but skid marks at me race suits as well <laughs> I, I think should, if there's a badge of honour have the tyre marks painted on yeah. in the future like, but like a proper old tread pattern mm. yeah but, but what do you think truly was that just a hopelessly dumb move or you know a bit of half optimistic half I'll be honest at that point in the race I was slightly not paying attention as much as I had been at the beginning cause you were at a stag sort of, weekend weren't you I was the previous night yes, yes. oh lord <laughs> um, some some ugly sights there. It was in Birmingham as well. So oh, I am sorry. <laughs> yeah, the architecture was one of them. I, did, I wanted to go and have a look. I used to live in Birmingham, and, and but it was a few years ago, and one of the great things that always used to make me just do a little smile inside was the fact that you could drive down the Bristol Road, and people who know Birmingham will know what I'm talking about. There's, there's a row of car dealers, now mostly closed down. There's a Jag garage and Aston Ferrari, and there's a Volvo one, I think, still there. 
and a Ford one. And opposite that, on a bank by, I think it's like a Welsh church, actually. There's a lot of them. It used to have Birmingham Super Prix spelled out in flowers for when the Birmingham Super Prix was on. But yeah. obviously they couldn't be bothered to dig the flowers up, nor sort of plant more. So you could just still see the outline, this sort of increasingly unruly bank of flowers where it said Birmingham Super Prix. Now, this was 10 years ago. I don't know whether now it's the flowers have completely gone so shapeless that you can't see it. But I, I wanted to pop back and have a look now that spring is here. Mm. And I didn't have time because I had to get back to watch the race. Knowing Google Earth, that'll, uh, that'll give you... Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Talk amongst yourselves. He's going to do it. <laughs> I only just remember the Birmingham Super Prix. Was it an F3 or an F3000 race? It would have been, because I think it was pre-F3000. Maybe it was, yeah. Pre-F3000. I don't know, F3000 was going a fair bit, though. Like, was late, it? Uh, yeah, definitely around in the late 80s. And this no, but been... Birmingham Super Prix was, was early to mid-80s. So right. 80... 86. They had. I'm going to come back on mine. Yeah, yeah. It's just annoying now. <laughs> You're in the middle. They one, I had uh, one of them, and I think they only ran it twice. Again, we haven't done our research, but who knows where the conversation goes on this show? I think they had a Metro Six R Four race Ooh. at one point. Now I reckon that would have been possibly 87 because it would have probably been Group B rallying had been cancelled. Right, and there were a few of them knocking. And they around. had a load of them knocking around from mm. the homologation batch they'd had to build. So they had mm. some massive one make, one series mm. race on the streets of Birmingham, if memory serves, it was in the pouring rain as well. But there were, I think there were lots of things. I mean, they'd, they'd shut down the city to have a racetrack built, Lovely. so they might as well have crammed in lots of racing. Why can't they bring the Super Prix back? I bet it was quite a spe- spectacle. I mean, yeah. I just can't really imagine a local authority right now, uh, any local authority, going for a street race in their town anymore. I think it's something that... Just from the point of view of health and safety in this country, it won't get allowed a lot. And just restricting trade and all that. But Monaco yeah, makes restric- it work. Not that there's much trade Yeah, in they Monaco. do. But Monaco is different in so many ways. There are just so many ways in which it's hugely different to any other city in the UK. Cannot compare it. Um, mm. Although on the subject of street races, it does sound as if there's a slightly... Stronger chance now that uh, we might end up with some kind of New York race. Ah, uh, the New York. Jersey bid was well, withdrawn. Yes. You know about that? They put in the uh, bid, and uh, within 48 hours of it being announced, it was withdrawn the oh, big, really? because oh, it was I a thought... massive objection. Very disappointing. Because oh, okay. I was looking I forward that to they that. Put it in. I didn't read yeah, it. No, they withdrew it. What do you know, Richard? You got an okay. answer? So, sorry, I was just. I was, I was... He's got Google Maps open on his uh, I can laptop. See the Welsh there, church. Apparently. I see the Welsh church. Yeah, chapel. Oh, it's I think. Somewhere around here. Where was it? Still, there's street here. viewing here. Yeah, uh, here, I'll tell you what, this is compulsive radio. This is it. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll come back to this, but first, this the Birmingham Super Prix. Come to the Birmingham Super Prix starting on the date that's quite soon, I think it's and going on until certainly sometime in the future. The Birmingham Super Prix! Uh, the Birmingham Super Prix brings something of some description uh, to the streets of Britain's uh, second second city second city town city The Birmingham Super Prix! Featuring racing from all types of uh, car? 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 Including Formula Something or Other and the prestigious Brit Championship Thing Race Series events. The Birmingham Super Prix! Featuring a cavalcade of famous celebrities, including that bloke out of that thing that, oh, you know, it was a and a man! Who's got a hat? Or oh, he did some time before. And that guy with the catchphrase, of course. Who could forget? And a lady of some description. Yes! The Birmingham Super Prix! The unforgettable Birmingham Super Prix. Live from the heart of... Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's, it's gone. It's... Who's the, the guy who works in the news agent? Right. The Birmingham Super Prix! Remember his brother? He was where he lived? No, that's not right. It's not Chester. It's... Ah, uh, no, it's gone. Is this... Is it, is it, is it still on? Right. Who's the guy with the big nose? Well, it's not him either. Gareth Jones on speed. Broadcasted to the regions. With Snippet Man. 
So, to save you lot from scrambling to Wikipedia, we've just done that. And the Birmingham Super Prix ran from 1986 to 1989, and it was... Makes it the longest uh, race of all time, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> On the Welsh scale, that was still 24 hours, though, I believe. But it was actually Formula F3000, as we said in those days. But the support races were BTCC. All sorts, BTCC. Yeah. I, I didn't look up about my Metro 6R4s that may only exist in my mind but I'll check that as well. But yes, in general, the Birmingham Super Prix was an extraordinary thing that was. If you were given carte blanche to put a race somewhere where there hadn't been a race before, where would you do it? I know what i do. I was fantasising about this while watching Monaco the other day. It would be Llandidno in North Wales. It would be dramatic. Lovely seafront, a bit like Monaco. And then up the Great Orm, they used to have the uh, what, the Lombard RAC uh, rally, of course, mm. around the Great Orm. So up the Great Orm, back down. It would be marvellous. And what you'd do, if it was me, I would do a deal with Anglesey Circuit just up the road mm. and Alton Park and get a round of Formula 3 there, make it a Formula 3 sort of national championship I'd, be, I'd love that I'm, I'm, actually, I'm going to go and promote that race now okay. so, but that's purely for you know Welsh passionate reasons I'd love a race like that in Wales you know, where would you do it anywhere in the world anywhere in Britain what would it be a 24 hour race for Tw- instance a 24 hour race yeah. Okay. Uh, for instance if we've got carte blanche we can go for the impossible stupid ideas so yeah, we I'll, like those. I'll go for the 24 hours of London and I'll, uh, no, I'll, yeah. I'll lay out a circuit that will enable me to, you know, maybe have a little coffee at Bar Italia, you know, mm. at two o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and then uh, mm. maybe come the afternoon I can pop down to uh, Lisboa, Patisserie, get it, a couple of it, little... Uh, it couple would have to be on the north side of, got, of the river, though, wouldn't it? Because you don't would. go south after two o'clock in the morning, do well, you? Well, the pothole south of the river is so much worse. It's yeah. got <laughs> to be north of the river. And the people. Oh, I didn't just say that. <laughs> <laughs> but they drive on the other side of the road and speak funny in South London, though, don't they? So I've heard. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wouldn't go there myself, but I, I don't want to. It's practically Normandy, anywhere south of the river. So, yeah, yeah I, do, I don't know. What, if you're going to do 24 hour race, you've got plenty of time to play with. Let's do Le, le 24 Heures du M25. Ooh. I'm talking about the M25. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Ah, really you see, you come here with your okay. 24 hour race. fancy foreign That's got a certain talk. something. I, actually, one of the chaps who writes to this show fairly regularly showed me a sticker that he's got on the back of his van the other day, which was the M25. Five ring <laughs> van. You know the stickers that you get of the Nürburgring, yeah. of the layout of the circuit. He's got the M25 in the back of his works van, which I think is I, very do cool. Do you know what? I, I like I, those M25, like those, sorry, they're not the M25 ones, that's quite funny, but those Nürburgring stickers that people put on the back of their cars, I find those faintly irritating because really, it's just a sticker that goes, I haven't crashed yet! <laughs> what? Yet being the important yet being, But I'm going back yet. in May! And then you'll probably bin your M3 into the Armco. I'm saying that as someone who's never driven the Nürburgring, of course. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, I, I come I, back to smote me when I go there trying to be all clever and <laughs> into the barrier within about three seconds, like that bloke in that brilliant YouTube clip. Yes, have that, you seen that? that? Yes. I, see, I was actually just watching it just a couple of days ago. Beamer, yeah. uh, Hang on, I don't know this. Explain. Oh no, it's too complicated to explain, and, and it's got a swear word in which you will have to bleep out. So <laughs> no, well I'll show it to you. If you imagine the most embarrassing thing that you could imagine, videoing thing. yourself doing, um, going on the Nurburgring. It's pretty much it. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, go. I think I, I can't remember. I think it's called something like five or seven second ringmeister, something like that. Do enough searching on the internet; it'll come up. Just do, yeah. Nurburgring crash on YouTube. Crash BMW it'll come up. really yeah, fast. Yeah, they've got. I think things. what let them down was I think from memory they had a Snickers on the dashboard. <laughs> which I don't, I don't think that the I think I'm in the Mars bar, they'd be have, fine. But maybe they do. I don't know. What were we talking about? I can't remember. Oh yeah, where would you do yeah. a, a 24 hour race in Britain? I don't know. I'd go back to Birmingham. Or find a use for Coventry, which is that that's got a ring road and it's quite small and it's also dangerous in a road car. So, you know, a racing car would really spice things up. Actually, you've got me thinking now, I'm, I'm just revisiting the London idea, the North Circular. How about that as a race? Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, 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 you've got yeah. some, you know, you, and you've got a r- nice variety of sections there. You could yeah. really belt onto it, onto the Hangar Lane Gyratory the wrong way. And then sort of loop down onto the A40. Sorry, if you if you don't know London or care, this is probably quite boring. But we'll compare notes afterwards. I think you could yeah, do a, a, quite a saucy little corner there. We can make this work. Tell you what, though, to wrap this up, I don't think this could actually happen. Why can you not have a 24-hour race in London? Mm, noise restrictions. That London, despite its reputation, unlike... Tokyo and New York and Los Angeles 
It's not a 24 hour city, no, yeah, is right. it? Right. Everyone yeah. goes to bed. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. well public yeah, transport. Actually, there are still places you can. Yeah, you I've, I've managed to find somewhere to get dinner at like three in the morning or something. It's not really dinner then, no, is no, it? That's an early breakfast. Well, that's not quite true. Yeah, but no, there are places in town that you can get stuff. But you're right, it's yeah. not necessarily. As cosmopolitan and 24 hours, it might. Yeah, take. I mean, New York, you know, is is a completely it's truly 24 hour, city yeah. in terms of you know yeah. what you can do at do four you know o'clock the least, in the morning. But then yeah. again, New you can York, decide to go and do something at four o'clock in the morning in. But city like that, which I think that the, the surrounding area and the commerce and everything would adapt because let's be honest, Le Mans is in the French countryside, which to my mind yeah. is the least 24 hour place <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah. Everything shuts at 7:28. <laughs> Even the the cafe with those surly teenagers playing Babby Foot that closes. It closes when there's less than seven people in there, and there's always fewer. less than seven people in there. Fewer. Beg your pardon. Thank you. And so it's always shut. Everything's shut. The French countryside is shut. That's it. After a certain certain time it's shut and there's always one slightly drunk man going back to one of those fun little axiom electric y diesel like mono cell car things and he can barely get the key in the door and puttering off back to his farm and there's a chicken in the car usually but everything is shut which is good it means less people around for him to run over and that's why the French have the Le Mans 24 hours it's their it's only opportunity to do that don't get me wrong I love France like, I love the yeah, French, yeah. French countryside but you yeah. just have to accept that when you, if you go and stay in the French countryside well I have on a few occasions it will be shut after seven o'clock ish I went to well, France once these old country ways you know it's not yeah. uh, non, yes. none, of, none of newfangled I went to France stuff. once it was closed. <laughs> You've been listening to Richard Porter. Goodbye. Zog. Goodbye. And me, Gareth Jones. See you in about 12 days. To send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site or follow us on Twitter, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. Gareth Jones on Speed! <laughs>